Hello everyone, Steve here with a video showing how to debug my easy build clock and get it working properly. The first step is simply to hang the clock on the wall. Uh, screw or nail into a wall stud at somewhere between 68 and 72 inches high is a good starting point. The, the pendulum shaft, it's really a few components. The pendulum bob just slides right onto the, the lower portion of the pendulum rod and the shaft is just simply drops into position. If you already have a weight shell you can go ahead and put the put that on the clock although I actually recommend that you test everything first before you build and print the weight shell because you don't necessarily know how much weight this clock is going to need. So if you're lucky, the clock just starts working right away. Uh, otherwise, you can go through the step-by-step -step debug process and then determine how much weight is really going to be needed. This clock is working right now, but let's suppose that it wasn't. How do you debug it? Well, the best way is to isolate the parts into easy-to-test components. Uh, one component being the, the pendulum bearings, the rest of the gear train, and then also the beat of the clock. So let's just start focusing on those one by one. Now, one of the great things about this clock is that the, the frame is such that you can remove two screws from the back of the clock and that allows you to remove the pallet. And I took the hands off the clock. The purpose of that is now I can set this on a spool of filament and I can remove those screws without, the, without breaking off the, the post for the, the minute hand remove the screws and the pallet can be removed from the clock. The pallet has thumb screws. Simply remove the back thumb screw and turn the pallet over. Put the thumb screw back on. Now when I put this back into the clock, the pallet will be off to the side and everything else can be tested. So I put the pendulum arm back into position with the pallet to the right instead of engaging with the escapement. Now when I put this on the wall, I can test the pendulum by itself and I can test the entire gear train by itself without the, the pallet interfering with the escapement. One of the first tests is the pendulum free swing test. This allows checking that the pendulum bearings are low friction. Simply just bring the pendulum off to the side, release it, and then time how long it takes for that amplitude to degrade. It should take at least a minute or two for the amplitude to be reduced in half if you have good clean bearings. And I like to see at least 10 minutes for the, the pendulum to reduce amplitude from four degrees to each side down to maybe a quarter of a degree. I mean, you'll still see a little bit of movement. I'm gonna go ahead and let this swing for a while and we can record the degradation and I'll put it in fast forward mode so that I don't have to bore you for 10 minutes. So that took about 10 minutes, a little bit longer than 10 minutes to degrade to just a very small amplitude. And these are not fancy bearings. These are just generic bearings that I buy off of eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, a package of 10 of these. I typically pay 
between six to seven dollars, maybe even as cheap as four or five dollars. So they are not expensive bearings. A uh, package of 10 of them is enough bearings to build two clocks. If the pendulum swings for 10 minutes or longer, th that means that those bearings are good enough to be used in your clock. The next test is to test for friction in the gear train. And you can put the hands back on the clock. It helps to see how things are progressing, although it's not necessarily critical. I start with just a hook-shaped piece of wire and any kind of weights. I happen to have found some, I guess they're three-quarter inch hole washers, and they're about an eighth of an inch thick. They weigh a little bit over an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half each. And I just hang a couple of them and watch that, you know, how many does it take for the escapement to turn. And the amount of weight that's needed is going to depend on the size of the clock, the larger clock takes more weight, and also the runtime option that you picked. The longer runtime options don't have the same amount of leverage as the short runtime options, so it's going to take a little bit more weight. Uh, but we're looking for maybe one or two pounds, or, uh, maybe less, depending on your runtime options. I can see with the amount of weight that I've added onto this clock, that the escapement is spinning easily. Um, what I also want to do is stop the escapement and make sure that it starts again. Make sure that there's no dead spots. Uh, when, no matter where I stop the escapement, it needs to still have a little bit of energy to continue moving. And that looks like that's enough to keep the escapement spinning no matter, you know, the, and that no matter where I stop and start up again, it still has enough energy to keep going. And I can go ahead and just let this run. It might take two hours for the, the weight to hit the floor. That's okay. Um, it still has a lot, there's a lot of gearing between the winding drum and the escapement. So it's probably one rotation of the winding drum. It's probably a couple hundred rotations at the escapement. So it is going to take a while for this to fall to the ground. Now, this is not enough weight to run the clock. It's only enough weight to get the escapement rotating. So what that's going to tell me is that I'm going to need to add additional weight in order to make the clock run and also double the weight because we're going to use a pulley. So it might take a minimum of, well, minimum of 2x this weight if we added a pulley just to get the escapement to rotate and maybe double that again, the clock should run using that much weight. So I'm going to weigh this really quickly. That was just about 19 ounces. So a little bit, little bit less than a pound and a quarter. So if I used five pounds this clock might have enough energy to run properly. So the pallet is properly assembled back into the clock and I am going to hang the clock on the wall and put it back together and we, the last test showed about one and a quarter pounds of weight was enough to keep the escapement rotating. So I'm going to try this clock using a five pound weight shell. This is a little bit smaller weight shell than I was using earlier. Uh, it's just about, just under five pounds. Let's see how well it works. I guess we can add the hands back onto the clock. So yes, the clock is ticking, although what I notice is that the beat is very uneven. And so what I want to do next is I want to
pulled the pendulum to one side and then the other and then watch for the position of where it ticks and where it talks. So there's a tick, we'll call that a tick, and there's a talk. So definitely over to the right hand side. So the easiest way, you know, since this is to the right, I want to bring everything to the left is I can just tilt the clock frame until that's balanced. Now I went a little bit too far, bring it back to the middle. And it, now if I just bring the pendulum to one side and release it, the clock is running. Now if, if I was going to mount this permanently on the wall, I might want to put the lower screw or nail into the wall. That's going to lock the frame rigidly in a vertical position. At that point, I can adjust the knobs on the pallet to bring the pendulum arm forward or backwards along the, the angled groove on the pallet. And that would set the beat relative to the position of the clock on the wall. So this clock is running now with a five pound weight. And if I used a six or seven pound weight, the clock would run even more robustly. Now five pounds is probably about the minimum. Might be just okay if we went down to around four pounds. But when you run really close to the lower threshold, typically you're going to get a lower amplitude pendulum swing and oftentimes the clock might stop after an hour or two or sometime in the middle of the night or if your cat walks by or the air conditioner kicks on it doesn't take a lot of disturbance to stop a clock that doesn't have a lot of energy reserve so it's best to take take the amount of weight that you started with hanging directly on the string that got the escapement to spin double that to give enough power reserve double it again to account for the pulley use that pretty much as the minimum amount of weight that your clock is going to need these clock frames can handle up to about 10 pounds and there's different options for the weight shell so wait until after you've tested the clock to determine how much weight you need and then print that weight shell um, based on the tables that are in the, the manual and also based on if you're using lead shot or BBs to fill the weight shell you would use a different diameter or a different height of a weight shell. Another thing to keep in mind is if you go really high on the weight that you use to drive the clock that makes the clock a little bit louder it makes it more robust less likely to stop but it gives more energy to the escapement and when the escapement hits the pallet arms it does make a louder tick if you like that feel free to increase the weight as much as you like this clock is running pretty robustly right now with a five pound weight and notice the amplitude of the pendulum we're more than three degrees to each side. That's, the clock needs a minimum of two degrees to each side. This is enough amplitude to, that this clock would continue running. This is a 2.4 inch weight shell filled with lead. Comes in at just under five pounds. This is a 2.8 inch weight shell filled with lead. No extension, but it comes in almost eight pounds. I'm going to swap the weight shell for a second. The clock got a little bit louder. If we let this thing swing for a while, we should also notice that the pendulum amplitude has increased from side to side. This clock would be a lot more robust with this size weight shell, but the most important thing is the clock becomes more stable. One more thing worth mentioning with this clock, it's the large version of the clock, and I believe this is running with the 14 day runtime. So if you built the clock with the seven day runtime or seven and a half, essentially wind it once a week, or I think this clock, the large clock has a four and a half day runtime, 
should take less weight to keep the clock running. If you've got your clock this far and it still doesn't quite run super reliably, one thing you can do is you can try to increase the weight. And there are quarter height extensions to the weight shell that just get stacked on the bottom and obviously an end cap below that. And you can stack as many as you need um, within limit, probably no more than two would be reasonable. And each one would add 20 to 25% additional weight to the weight shell. Usually makes the clock more reliable within limits. If you add too much weight, the frame could sag. And especially if your wall is not perfectly flat, what happens uh, is adding extra weight will, could cause the frame to sag. And there have been instances of a clock stopping because of too much weight. This clock should be able to easily support 10 pounds of drive weight if all four of the positions around the, the back frame are touching the wall. If, for, if your wall is not perfectly flat, put the frame together with only the side supports and the top support. That gives you a triangle and then take a ruler and measure how far away from the wall the, the bottom of the clock is. If that's a half an inch, uh, 12 and a half millimeters, then the default length of the bottom support post is perfect. But if it's more or less, that's telling you your, your wall may not be perfectly flat and you can scale the Z height of the bottom support bracket. And that way, your clock will sit perfectly flush to the wall. Yeah. I can pull down on this clock right now uh, because it is flush to the wall. I cannot see any flex on the frame. And I'm probably adding about 10 pounds of force right now. So there you have as many debug hints as I can give. Uh, if you still have problems, feel free to email me. Tell me the symptoms. Um, don't just say the clock doesn't run, but tell me why doesn't it run. How long does the pendulum swing? How much weight does it take directly on the string for the escapement to rotate? With a few hints, you know, a few bits of information like that, usually the, the reason that the clock isn't running can be pinpointed or at least tell you where to focus on your debug to get the clock running properly. Once it's running properly, it should run for many years. Uh, the first clock that I built has been running for two and a half years now, I believe. Still running every day. It's in my father-in-law's house. Uh, continues to run. That one's an eight-day clock. And right now, I've got two of the easy build clocks running in my house. The 32-day clock and a 14-day large clock both of them running very reliably. So hope you enjoyed building the clock and hope you enjoy the clock for many years.